You open your patient's chart and see the words lateral medullary stroke. How do you feel? Is your stomach sinking so much you can feel it in your shoes? Or are you feeling confident and prepared to help this patient? Whether you feel unprepared or unfazed, you're in the right place. This video will give you an overview of brainstem strokes and specifically what med SLPs should know about lateral medullary strokes and Wallenberg syndrome. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Number one, an overview of the brainstem. We'll start with a quick overview of the brainstem. To put it simply, the brainstem is the structure that connects the cerebrum of the brain to the spinal cord and cerebellum. It is composed of three sections in descending order, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. There is a lot happening in the brainstem. 10 of the 12 cranial nerves arise from their cranial nerve nuclei in the brainstem. So as you might have guessed, the brainstem plays a very, very important role in swallowing, respiration, voice, and speech. Cranial nerves five and seven arise in the pons. Cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12 arise in the medulla. So while you're doing your clinical swallow evaluation and cranial nerve exam, you can keep those structures and nerves in mind. Let's walk through an example of what we might see on a cranial nerve exam with a patient who has had a brainstem stroke. And I'll preface this by saying, like with all of our patients, the clinical presentation of a patient who's had a brainstem stroke is going to vary based on their medical history like prior strokes, neurological history, head and neck surgical history, as well as the location and size of the stroke. Basically, once you've met a brainstem stroke survivor, you'll see that person is just one individual who's experienced a brainstem stroke. Everyone is different. That being said, just as an example, let's talk about the interesting patient described in a 2019 case report by Yanioka et al. from Japan. They share the story of a 68-year-old woman with a past medical history of hypertension. She was admitted to the hospital with a localized small infarction in the right medial pontomedullary junction. She presented with vertigo, right-sided facial paresis, left-sided decreased sensation to heat and cold, and severe dysphagia that was so significant and obvious it really bothered the patient. Her dysphagia was characterized primarily by UES dysfunction and the UES is innervated by cranial nerves nine and 10. So if we were doing a cranial nerve exam, we noticed that cranial nerves five and seven were impaired. This woman's voice and speech were reportedly not affected by the stroke. So we wouldn't notice any other cranial nerve impairments during our clinical swallow eval. After her MBS or fees, we'd notice the UES dysfunction, cranial nerve nine and 10 impairment. So what was the outcome for this patient? Yanioka et al reported, Finally, through swallowing rehabilitation, her swallowing functioning improved over four weeks in synchronization with the recovery of thermal hypoalgesia, which is decreased sensitivity of painful stimuli. She left our hospital with full independent activity of daily living, despite the fact that her mild left thermal hypoalgesia and hemidysesthesia, which is loss of sensation on one side, continued. Next, we'll dive more into what SLP should know specifically about lateral medullary strokes. But before we do, if you wanna learn more in-depth information about the brainstem, check out the resources in the description below, especially Gene 2001 and Davenport 2011. If you're already a MedSLP Collective member, check out the resource titled Neural Control of Swallowing and the webinar, Swallow Neurophysiology, the Roadmap to Improving Patient Care. What should SLPs know about lateral medullary strokes? While all brainstem strokes should raise a little red flag in your SLP brain as a risk factor for dysphagia, as well as dysphonia, dysarthria, and other cognitive communication deficits, lateral medullary strokes are especially noteworthy for SLPs. As you know, the medulla is home to several different pairs of cranial nerves that affect speech, voice, and swallow functions. When a patient has a stroke in the lateral medulla, they may present with lateral medullary syndrome, also known as LMS or Wallenberg syndrome. Lateral medullary syndrome or Wallenberg syndrome occurs when there is an occlusion in the vertebral artery or the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, PICA. 
that prevents blood flow to areas of the medulla oblongata. The clinical features of lateral medullary syndrome, aka Wallenberg syndrome, may include impairment of pain and thermal sensation over the contralateral side of the trunk and limbs, impairment of pain and thermal sensation over the ipsilateral face, ipsilateral Horner syndrome, which means decreased pupil size and eyelid drooping, ipsilateral limb ataxia, dysphagia, dysarthria, dysphonia, nystagmus, hiccups, and ipsilateral hyperalgesia, which is enhanced sensitivity to pain. Dysphagia occurs in 51 to 94% of patients with lateral medullary strokes. But I should point out that the pathophysiology and recovery of dysphagia in lateral medullary strokes is not fully understood. Most of the dysphagia research on pure lateral medullary infarcts is made up of case studies and studies with a small sample size. Whether or not your patient will present with dysphagia and the severity of their dysphagia will depend on the level of involvement of several swallow-related structures that are located in the lateral medulla. They include the nucleus ambiguous, nucleus tractus solitarius, dorsal motor nucleus, and the spinal trigeminal nucleus. So what else do SLPs need to know? The literature supports that the onset of lateral medullary syndrome, LMS, is sudden in about 75% of patients, and onset is gradual in about 25% of patients. Sudden onset symptoms typically include headache, vertigo, dizziness or gait ataxia, and later occurring symptoms typically include sensory symptoms, dysphagia, hoarseness, and hiccups. Lateral medullary syndrome needs to be diagnosed as soon as possible in order to support the best patient outcomes. LMS is diagnosed with a combination of a neurological clinical exam and imaging. It's also important to know that head CTs aren't highly sensitive for the diagnosis of acute posterior fossa ischemic stroke. A lateral medullary stroke might go undetected with a CT. So MRI is the recommended study if a lateral medullary stroke is suspected. One member of the MedSLP Collective shared a story in our private Facebook group about a patient who was admitted to the hospital with a mild facial droop, mild dysphonia, and complaints of severe dysphagia and vertigo. His head CT and MRI were negative. But because of this patient's complaints of dysphagia and his suspicious neurologic presentation, the SLP completed an MDS. She noted many of the typical signs of Wallenberg syndrome, unilateral pharyngeal paresis, UES dysfunction, delayed swallow initiation, and posterior loss of the bolus prior to the swallow. The SLP alerted the primary physician and neurologist and advocated for this patient to have a repeat MRI, this time with special attention to the brainstem. On the second MRI, a small lateral medullary infarct was found. The patient participated in exercise-based therapy and was able to go from NPO to a modified diet within two weeks. Are you enjoying this video so far? I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also, do you have any specific questions about brainstem strokes or Wallenberg syndrome? Leave a comment below and tell me about it. We'll be sure to get your questions answered as soon as possible. Make sure to stick around to the end to claim a freebie or two. Number three, interventions and special considerations for Wallenberg syndrome. Now we'll talk about three key points to keep in mind for patients with Wallenberg syndrome. Number one, identifying dysphagia as early as possible is essential to prevent aspiration, malnutrition, and or a prolonged hospital stay. This is where your nursing or stroke screening protocols can come in handy, big time. Using a validated dysphagia screening tool at your facility or getting a protocol order for SLPs to evaluate all stroke patients can help quickly identify patients who need our help. If you don't have a swallow screening protocol in place at your facility yet, talk with your leadership team to see how you can make that happen. You can leave a comment if you need help getting started. Whenever you first meet a patient with a lateral medullary stroke, you'll need to complete a full clinical swallow evaluation with a thorough cranial nerve and oral mechanism exam, just like you would with any patient. But be very, very cautious. The risk for silent aspiration in the lateral medullary stroke population is high. After all, we know there's a big chance cranial nerves nine and 10 are impaired, which can mean your patient can't feel if they aspirate. Whenever you have any concerns about dysphagia, it's best practice to order an instrumental assessment. I dare on the side of doing an instrumental for most, if not all, lateral medullary stroke patients. After your MBS or fees, you can use that information to create a dysphagia management plan 
to best help your patient and their individual needs. Number two, UES dysfunction is a common issue for patients with Wallenberg syndrome, and it can be tricky to treat. You'll probably need to collaborate with ENT and GI, so start building those working relationships ASAP. Depending on their clinical expertise, usually one of these specialists will be able to perform a cricopharyngeal myotomy, which is a surgical treatment for UES dysfunction. It's typically recommended to wait three months before this surgery is considered in order to allow for UES dysfunction to resolve with spontaneous recovery and therapy first. Number three, prognosis for swallowing recovery is generally good with Wallenberg syndrome patients. Your patient will likely need some intensive exercise-based dysphagia rehab based on the results of their instrumental. They'll also need ongoing education, an updated evaluation of their progress, and frequently updated goals to help achieve buy-in with therapy and maintain their motivation. I love this story a MedSLP Collective member shared with us in our private group. She said, I have a patient who is a young lateral medullary stroke who came to me NPO and his goal was to eat pizza. About a month ago, I was able to upgrade him to thin liquids only, but despite every strategy, any viscous consistency resulted in nearly 100% of the bolus remaining in the piriforms. We have been doing MDTP and AMP care and I got him a GI consult and esophageal dilatation. Today, I repeated his MBS and it was looking much better, but he still had so much pharyngeal residue that he couldn't clear and we couldn't do a solid diet until I turned him AP and noticed that the left piriform seemed to fill more than the right and then anything that emptied seemed to be on the right. I had him do a right head turn and bam, it was like finding the drain plug. The entire pharynx emptied immediately. I was literally jumping up and down. Even the radiologist was excited. I told the patient, you're having pizza tonight. He said, stop messing with me. I said, no, you're having pizza tonight. And he looked at me, saw I was completely serious and began to cry. He had another three hours of therapy left and hadn't packed his lunch. So he went to the cafeteria, picked out his first solid food meal in three months, and he did amazing. He's going to have July 4th barbecue with just a simple right head turn. I told him, this is why I'm a speech therapist. What an amazing story, right? Moments like that are why I love being an SLP too. I've got a free gift for you over at medslpcollective.com. You'll get instant access to our free MedSLP Collective clipboard kit, which includes our clinical swallow examination resource. We have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases. Head over to medslpcollective.com now to get your hands on it. The link will be in the description below.